Hello, podcast listeners. We know podcasts are a great way to catch up on a program that you may have missed on KSJE, and it's provided as a free service of this radio station. But you know, KSJE is now listener-supported, and so while you enjoy this podcast, we hope that you'll also take some time to join KSJE. Become a member today. It's quite easy to do. Just go to our website at ksje.com slash support and pick the level of support that best matches your budget. Thanks again for listening. Here's your podcast. Well, let me turn to my guests who are here with me this morning. Back for uh, what's becoming a semi-regular visit, I think, here is uh, San Juan County Manager Mike Stark. Good morning. Thanks for coming back. Good morning, Scott. Always good to be here. Good to have you with us. Also, Jim Cox is here, the county's Chief Financial and Strategy Officer. And, Jim, good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you for coming in as well. And uh, to talk numbers and, and budgets and uh, and things like that as we get ready, uh, the new fiscal year has started. And so does that mean you're just using the credit card, Mike Stark? Or how's it, how's it going? Not quite. Okay. No. We're working off of our interim budget. Oh, yeah, you have an interim budget. Okay. All adopted right. by our commission back in May, but now it's time to uh, bring forth Because if you had a credit card, I would like to know what the limit was on a credit card uh, like that, that, that to run the county. That would be a pretty big limit. Yeah. yeah, I would think so. <laughs> so how do, things, how do things look, both of you? Let me ask you, because we know um, San Juan County, as well as a lot of other entities in the county, are facing economic challenges. And so uh, as you build a budget, um, what are some of the things that you are looking at, Jim yeah, you know, Scott, it's actually been a, a challenging budget season. Uh, primarily, uh, we're looking at our revenue sources. And, uh, uh, you know, obviously every every fiscal year, our main objective is to uh, make sure that we can continue to provide the services to uh, citizens of the county. And uh, uh, when we're uh, looking at that, you know, so we, we have these increasing expenditures and then a, uh, uh, a reduced revenue base uh, through FY um, 19, we noticed uh, quite a significant drop in our uh, gross receipts tax, the sales tax. And so uh, that really added in, uh, another factor into this year's uh, budget. But you know what? Overall, we actually uh, uh, were able to uh, really work hard and uh, get a balanced budget. We're able to provide, um, continue to provide all of the services uh, to the county. Uh, there's no reduction there. We're able to meet all the capital needs. So right. It's, you it's, can't just print more money, more stock can't print bucks, more money. as it, we wish as we it could, were. But yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so that's why you have to have a balanced budget. And then that goes goes before the county commission and yes, then sir. it has to go to the state I suppose for final approval yes, and, yes. and a check and things like that right yeah so we uh, uh, go through uh, with with that approval process uh, first it, it goes through uh, Mike Stark we look through it uh, make sure that uh, uh, we are comfortable uh, then it'll go to the commission uh, make sure that uh, uh, they're comfortable with those numbers and then it goes up to uh, the state the local government division the Department of Finance Administration uh, overall they uh, they do have to uh, they have the authority um, to make it our legally adopted budget um, until that point, we uh, are only operating on our interim, which has already been approved by the state. I see. Not it's Mike's credit card. Not Mike's credit not card. Mike's credit Understood. Card. Okay. <laughs> That's all right. And so with this interim budget, how long can that go? I guess, can it just go until the state says it says you can adopt the final one or the yeah, final great one's question. good? Yeah, uh, Under statute, uh, the state has till September 3rd to approve a budget. Oh, okay. Uh, we have till uh, the end of July to submit it. Uh, I see. So it's, it's actually a very um, time-oriented process. Right. And I guess ideally they'd prefer to have all this done before the July 1 deadline to have a new spending plan in place. Yes, sir. So we have the interim budget that uh, is due uh, to them by June 1st. And then so they'll approve it by uh, July 1. Uh, had they not approved it, we actually wouldn't be able to operate. Um, then we'd have to whip out the credit card, yeah, I guess, or yeah. do something, right? Or some creative uh, financing or something. But yeah. that's not the case. So so that's good. You, uh, you brought some graphs and charts with you. So for our folks who are watching on YouTube or Facebook, we can share a little bit of that and maybe help yeah. to explain it a little bit more of uh, what we're talking about. It's pie charts and line graphs and all kinds of things there that we can maybe take a closer look at. So, But the, for the revenue, um, kind of walk us through that if you don't mind, Jim. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know what? Charts are what we uh, we love in finance. And, uh, right. Um, well, you make some good ones. They're very pretty. Really, the uh, when we look at revenues, um, you know, a lot of the, you know, I as a citizen would be, you know, concerned, okay, where is my money coming from? You know, I'm, I'm getting taxed with property tax. I'm paying, you know, sales tax and all of these different items. And right. so, and some people, I think, feel that they fund the entire county <laughs> government out of their some taxes. Do, yeah. And they'd be surprised to learn the many different sources <laughs> that come to actually help to fund county government. Absolutely. And so uh, our primary source is a gross receipts tax. So that, uh, when we look at the FY20 budget, that's approximately 34% of, of their, our total estimated revenue revenues of 107 million. 
<laughs> uh, and that's where you said you saw your biggest drop. Yes, sir. Right? Yeah, we actually, uh, if we were to compare collections from uh, the FY18, FY19 collections, we were down about 11% uh, countywide. And so when we look at 11%, that's significant uh, to county operations. We were looking at uh, about a $3.5 million reduction uh, in revenue. That, uh, and when there's talk at the state level of taxing internet sales and maybe sharing some of that with the municipalities, is that something that gets your attention? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It, it actually is something that, that would help, would it we not? Were, yes, we were happy to see that that um, went into place. Uh, these next two years are, are very much set by statute uh, in terms of how much we'll get. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to um, actually seeing how much revenue is uh, uh, derived off of those internet sales. It should go up. It shouldn't keep falling. Isn't that the projection? Yes, yes, correct. And, and long time overdue for some mm -hmm. folks to, to say. So anyway, but I, I interrupted you, but I wanted to raise that point. So we yes, have GRT, absolutely. which is your biggest chunk. Mm -hmm. And then? Next is our property taxes. So that's uh, factored about 26% of our entire uh, budget. Uh, really, a, uh, an important factor that I wanted to mention is that uh, with our property tax base, we are actually the second lowest of all of uh, the counties within the state. And so uh, what that tells all of the citizens is, is hey, while it's our 26 percent of our tax base, we're still able to operate and maintain it at a low level, uh, which is, is really good. So when, when you have um, people that are, are very concerned, hey, my property taxes are real significant, it does go to help um, fund all of the local governments. And so it, um, as you can see here, it, it uh, helps us uh, um, right. mainly in our general fund operations. Sure. And there are other entities that, that benefit to the schools, of yes, course, Salmon mm -hmm. College. Mm -hmm. and would be remiss if I didn't mention that from property taxes. And so that's where that's all going. Yeah. Yep. But, uh, but a big chunk goes to the county is what you're saying. Uh, here. As a percentage, Scott, I might add that it's 29% roughly of your total property tax bill that goes to San Juan County. And that actually is on every tax bill okay. that's generated in San Juan County. So it actually shows you as a percentage as well as the actual dollars of your total tax bill that are going to, um, first and foremost, the, the largest recipient of tax dollars in San Juan County are the school districts, depending upon what school district boundary you reside in. Right, okay. Um, and then San Juan College, I believe, is roughly 20% the county at 29 and then the state of New Mexico has a small percentage Got and it. so it is a misnomer since the tax bill is generated by San Juan County the assumption is San Juan County is the direct recipient of all those all dollars right, right. Uh, not, but not the treasurer right. receives those dollars and then they're dispersed to the various entities that have property tax authority got you good a good point so thank you for making that uh, that point, Mike Stark. And so, um, so we have property taxes, and then uh, what's the other one? Intergovernmental chunk. Yeah, that is actually you know, when we look at the graph. Uh, our actuals we only generate about 12 million. Uh, we're budgeting 22 million, so we see a significant increase. Uh, intergovernmental is is really our our state and federal grant funds. Uh, it, it funds our, we have state fire funds, we have federal grants, uh, we have uh, state capital appropriations that go into that. Uh, um, through this last past legislative session, there's, there's a significant amount going to uh, San Juan Regional uh, for um, renovation of their facilities. I see, right. Uh, we have additional funding uh, for other uh, entities. Got it. That were uh, passed through. Okay. Um, and then, uh, and then we can see the other smaller pieces there too, with other taxes and uh, some licenses and fees, and and the good old miscellaneous is up there at one percent. Mm -hmm. So, right. And so, w w the biggest drop you said was GRT. Are all these other ones kind of holding steady, or are they down as as well? I would assume property taxes are holding fairly steady, or yeah, property taxes are holding steady. Uh, we uh, are fairly confident in in that that we're not going to see a significant decline. Uh, we do have some properties under protest that uh, do end up uh, uh, reducing our overall budgetary um, base. Uh, however, uh, it, it's hard from a uh, in a budget level uh, when you have those because it's it's an unknown. Okay, can you um, generate revenue? But overall, I, we are very confident in uh, uh, those numbers. As I look closer, I see that you've got it out here in the numbers that it's down by about half a million property tax on the chart that I see, if I'm yeah, reading that correctly. It, yeah, what that was is primarily because of, of uh, significant protest of our property. Right. Uh, but uh, overall, it's it's not too, uh, gotcha. not too significant. But of course, all of our conversations about money, especially these days, talks about power plant and, and things like that. So I know that, that would be a big hit to mm -hmm. this part of your budget, correct? If, mm -hmm. uh, if the power plant and mines were to close, that's a, that's a, power, that's a property tax chunk, is it not? 
It is, Scott, and that's, of course, how we're approaching not this, this budget cycle, uh, but looking at and, and putting together a five-year um, look forward of, sure. of what our budget looks like and, and how do we, and it's really one of our three goals that our commission has given to me to make certain that we're uh, working on you know, as part of this budget process. And first and foremost is to maintain financial stability. And so we want to make certain that we're putting together a budget that allows us to weather any storm. And, and in worst case scenario, the plant completely uh, closes on, in 2022 uh, in Chan Energy, which is, you know, I think right. uh, putting together um, a pretty good case for how that plant can stay open post-2022. But if it can't, um, we're going to be still be able to maintain services to our citizens. Uh, as a county, uh, we are a subdivision of the state, and, and the sole source of, of services in the county, I mean, the municipalities provide services, but technically they don't have to exist. Um, you know, the, they existed. They exist because there were a group of citizens who said, hey, I'd like to incorporate. Um, we have the most recent incorporation of such a town, which is the town of Kirtland. That's right. That's that right. formed and said, we want to tax ourselves and provide enhanced level of service from what the county does today. But So we have to continue to exist. We've been in business since 1887. Uh, we're going to continue in business post-2022. And, and now, of course, a lot of great economic diversification uh, right, uh, that work is taking ongoing. place right now and ongoing, and we actually feel pretty optimistic about it. But from a financial standpoint, um, you know, we are looking at this as is trying to get as lean and mean as possible, making sure we're providing the most efficient services, um, cost-effective services to our citizens, uh, and that's evidence when you look at the historical chart, which um, I think you've got another slide that we could point to that shows. You know where we've been financially through throughout time, going back to actually as as most recent as the 2015-2016 budget. When you look at a total budget then of 151 million to what will be proposed to our commission this upcoming Tuesday of 130 million, you can see the significant reduction in, in dollars. But that has not led to a significant, as Jim mentioned, reduction in services. We've been able to maintain services, and when you look. At that number down a little further, the general fund only, that's the number that we closely watch because that's, we have a lot of special revenue funds right, of course. within yeah. our budget that are taxes that are earmarked for specific purposes. So the general fund is, is that, which is, it's not, can be used for general fund purposes, which funds almost all aspects of, of local county government. Right, and, and it's been you can covering see right around $30 million, it looks like. $30 million, but but look at from last year's, actuals to or, or last year's budget compared to this upcoming budget you know we're down 1.85 percent almost two percent so hats off to to our department heads uh, to our staff who are looking for creative ways to reduce expenditures um, and hats off to Jim and his team and the finance department are bringing uh, various tools to us to make this give us the ability to really analyze where where our dollars are going, how can we use technology to potentially uh, reduce those expenditures. Um, we've looked at different things from, from phone audits that are saving us upwards of $75,000 a year, phone and data audits. Uh, we've also looked at um, um, just other general expenses, uh, technology expenses. We've analyzed every contract throughout the county to see if there's ways that we can reduce expenditures. And, and like I said, just really setting the stage for how do we, looking forward, making certain that we can weather any storm right. uh, that's presented to us. But there are certain economies of scale, I guess, too, and things that you have to do. I mean, obviously, payroll and benefits are probably all your biggest expenses with county employees, and the county has, I'm trying to remember the number of how many employees, but it's in the hundreds. Uh, we have 650 employees countywide, and that's a great point, Scott. You know, if you look back to, to FY9, 10, uh, so that's a few years back, but over time we've actually reduced our headcount by 50 employees, and so that's another way in which we've been able to reduce expenditures. You know, anytime we have a, a a position come open, we're looking and analyzing: is there a way to reallocate that resource? Um, is there a way that we could eliminate that resource and do more with less? And, right. and that's been really the motto throughout the county. Like I said, to get as lean and mean as possible, to make certain that we're putting the county in the best financial shape. And, and not be in a position for our commission to have to look at raising revenues through increased taxes, either on the GRT side or the uh, property tax side. 
Right. And I guess at some point, there's, there's, you, can, you can only get so lean and so mean and still try to provide services and provide employment for those 650 mm -hmm. um, em employees. I mean, there's only so much a person can be asked to do on a, in addition to their other duties, right, as you get, try to cut, cut things down and ask more of your folks. That's correct. And, and so one of the tools that, that we've uh, re-engaged with here of recent is uh, working with the Center for Priority-Based Budgeting. Uh, in 2014, we were actually the first local government uh, in the state of New Mexico to engage with them and, and uh, take a different approach and a different look at, at, at how do you make those decisions if you have to. More importantly, how do you make decisions about the services that you're providing today? Are, they, are you providing the right type of service, the right level of service? And so it takes the general uh, line item budget that we're going to present to our commission and actually we worked with all of our department heads, elected officials to group those line items into programs and services that we're providing that are identifiable. Um, for example, road maintenance, snow removal, animal control, you know, breaking them into those categories. And interestingly enough, we have over 650 programs and services that we provide today that then in turn we can have those measured up against the criteria of, of what the commission wants to see in terms of goals for our community and also other factors um, you know, as it relates to who's providing that service. Can the service be provided by someone else? Um, and then that is quantifiably measured, and then you can actually see uh, quartile one, two, three, and four of what are the services that are providing the, the biggest return on investment and are highly valued based upon the goals and objectives from our commission. Uh, and so that's going to allow us to make, if we have to, those tough decisions later, because you're right. You can only squeeze the orange right. so much That's on right. the cost side. Eventually, the decision would be, okay, let's analyze all the services we're providing. Which of those are most valued by our citizens um, based on this quantifiable, objective way to measure? And then those would be the, the programs and services that in the future we would probably bring forth for consideration of, sure. well, how do we, how do we best move forward? Um, with the, the services that are of most value to our citizens. Right, and I don't want to make the whole program doom and gloom, but I mean it is the reality of decreasing revenue and that's the budget that you, you have to have a balanced budget, so that's where where those decisions are coming from. Now, uh, to go back to our comment about uh, property taxes and, and, and things along that line with the power plan, I'm not, I assume if P&M replaces that with something else, isn't that supposed to maintain some of our property tax base? Isn't that how it's supposed to work? Uh, it's supposed to work that way, there, but let's talk I, I about. Set you up for that. You right? set me up, and and, uh, and that's a, a great preview to P and M having a town hall in a, meeting in a up here weeks. on that's July true. 30th yes, at San Juan College. Actually, we're going to talk to uh, folks from P and M next week. Oh, great! As well, a let, of fact. let's talk about their proposed plan. So they propose four different options, right. That they're going to present to the Public Regulation Commission. And the idea, again, just to bring our audience up to speed, is that they are abandoning or, or closing the San Juan Generating Station. Mm -hmm. That's a done deal in 2022. And so while there are other talks with other companies to maybe keep that plant operating, P&M is getting out of the coal-fired business. So in response, they have got these four options of what they're going to do sure. to help San Juan County with that major decision. Is that a good Well, it, it's helped San Juan County, but it's also to replace power. Right. Because they're losing sure. power generation, and they have to replace that to be able to provide that to their ratepayers. Our folks in Albuquerque um, are sitting in the dark. That's right. All, that's right. All summer. Right. So anyway. And in the most cost-effective um, manner possible with the most reliable service. I mean, that's a that's a that's the PRC's responsibility to make sure that, that that's right. The, the P and M or any utility is providing an affordable um, and reliable service. So, in the Energy Transition Act, the the bill that has turned into law that was passed this spring, passed this past state. session, it indicated that and it was and it was sold as 450 megawatts of replacement power would be coming to San Juan County. Now, when you read the bill, uh, unfortunately we knew better when you read language and tried to get it removed, it said up to 450 megawatts. Okay. So you know that was an easy out for P&M to say, well, and then had some other language regarding reliability and whether or not it's, it uh, is the most cost effective solution. So. Here we go. Their first primary proposed solution, the one that they're bringing forth is this is the solution we'd like to bring right. to the PRC, only replaces 280 megawatts 
of natural gas-fired power in the Central Consolidated School District and 20 megawatts of solar power. So assuming a million dollars a megawatt, which is not the, the actual cost today of, of doing natural gas, probably closer for solar, let's just assume a million, mm -hmm. uh, that's 280, 280 million dollars of, of taxable value that would be going on to the rolls. Um, far short of the 450 million that ah. was assumed, right. um, compare that to the taxable value today of the mine and the plant of 666 million. Okay, that's it, those are the numbers. Right? You compare apples to apples, kind of thing. That's what we're talking about, right? So we're coming up um, still short, about sixty percent short. Right. So that's going to impact that part of the revenues, right? You bet. And the other part of the plan that's frustrating to us, which of course will be a, a point of discussion come July 30th, uh, they're planning on putting another 330 megawatts of solar in McKinley and Rio Arriba County. Well, the frustrating news for us, and I guess I we need to hear more about, you know, for the terms of their grid, why that may make sense, but, but why put that on the border of San Juan County? Rio Reba and McKinley County didn't lose jobs. They didn't lose, or potentially going to lose jobs. Right. Going to lose tax dollars from the closure of San Juan Generating Station. Why wouldn't we put all of that replacement power in San Juan County? Now you're talking about 350 megawatts of solar and 280 megawatts of natural gas. Boy, we're a lot closer to that $666 million number and almost made completely whole. Right. Assuming. Right. The value of those improvements being close to a million dollars a megawatt. Sure. But that's not one of the four proposals from P&M. They have a proposal that puts more replacement power here, but they indicate that that would be uh, an increase at an increased cost to the ratepayers, uh, to the folks that they provide service to. But um, solar power in San Juan County shouldn't produce more power that's more expensive than in McKinley County, should it? Agreed. I mean, I'm not an expert, but I'm just asking yes all right that'd be our assumption as well just wondering okay well we've gone from budget to uh, power plants to solar panels in our conversation and that's <laughs> that's not a bad thing but that's okay but jim cox back to you because then it's your job to come up with budgets and strategies for the next uh, five years out i guess with all these potential scenarios right mm -hmm. and so if we lose a big chunk of that uh, property tax base and uh, and what does that mean for making budgets that puts a blows a big hole in it doesn't it yes it, it certainly blows a, a big hole in it it, it uh, uh, really is where we rely on the priority based budgeting and we're looking at um, uh, you had mentioned you know we can only go so far before we really hit that um, uh, economies of scale where we can't scale down any further um, we, we have to look at okay what programs what services are we providing in the county now we hope that we never get to that point um, you know, we're going to continue to uh, strive to make sure that we can provide every service um, with every dollar that counts um, you know as an example uh, this fiscal year um, so not um, plant related but uh, uh, the uh, sales tax in the unincorporated area has significantly declined it's about 25 percent down from last year's collections uh, well Two, two uh, operations really are driven off of that tax. Um, one primarily is fire. Um, so uh, our fire operations uh, solely were funded by that tax, and uh, uh, they have seen a significant decline. And so our fire chief has worked really hard to um, maintain all of the services, make sure that we can per, you know, respond to all of the calls, uh, and keep that volume with this declining revenue. And so uh, we, we've had several meetings to um, come up with a balanced budget. How do we make sure we can continue those services, um, provide the capital that is needed? Uh, and so we look at, can part of the general fund cover some of, of those operations? And so we'll continue to do that. And uh, that's just one piece of, of many. Um, that we go through sure. in this budget cycle. Well, and folks who are watching the news may know that now the city of Bloomfield is in conversations with the county mm -hmm. about fire protection, possibly, yep. um, as they look at their own budget uh, issues. So mm -hmm. you're kind of talking a little bit about that as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's and, and uh, you know, from the county's perspective, uh, I know our fire chief uh, um, thinks that that would be a very viable uh, option uh, to uh, 
uh, manage uh, their operations. And it, it, what it does is it brings a lot of economies of scale. So we're looking at, they're looking at budget issues, we're looking at budget issues. How can we continue to still provide those services? So absolutely. Right, certainly. And staffing, I know, is always an ongoing issue with yep. every county mm -hmm. um, fire department. There's a lot of need, still, everyone for volunteers. So mm -hmm. um, anyone within the sound of our voices, uh, if you're interested, I know uh, the county fire chief would love to hear from you. Absolutely. absolutely. If you would yeah, love we to. We need uh, more volunteers. That's been the primary way that we've delivered services to our citizens in a very cost-effective manner and we're so thankful for the volunteers we have today they run a lot of calls and respond to a lot of emergencies and but you know we we get concerned because we have less volunteers than we've had in past years and and the volume of calls has stayed the same and it puts a lot of wear and tear on on our folks and we so we'd really like to thank you for putting the call to action sure. out well, because we do need folks to help uh, serve our community. I know it's a it's an ongoing conversation that the chief is always concerned about of having enough bodies to respond to those emergencies. So it's an important thing. Before we run out of time, gentlemen, I do want to ask um, again. The county has been honored with a couple of uh, mm -hmm. awards for accounting and budgeting and and things like that. Jim Cox, I guess that turns to to you and your staff of uh, absolutely. We uh, what you've accomplished every year. We we apply to the Government Finance Officers Association. Uh, it's a national association. Um, we apply for. Uh, our CAF room and apply for the budget and uh, really what that does is, is they evaluate our financial reporting. They make sure that we're meeting all the standards or make sure that we're reporting correctly. From a budget perspective, they're looking at a lot of uh, national guidelines. Uh, is it making sense? Are we you know, following uh, um, and presenting it appropriately so people can understand it? And uh, uh, it's the highest level of award that uh, the county can actually get. Uh, so we're, we're very uh, excited to say we've, we've got uh, the CAFR award for, uh, this will be their 13th year. Uh, budget award for the 11th year um, and uh, it's a collective effort uh, I, I can't thank uh, every employee at the county enough for number one following all the policies and procedures that makes our life in finance a lot easier I thank all of, of uh, then uh, my finance team um, you know if it, if it wasn't for them it would be a lot harder we wouldn't get the awards and so it's it's certainly uh, due to all of the dedication of, of my staff uh, and their efforts to uh, to get these awards and so we're we're very excited uh, very honored to get those and uh, we'll be presenting those at the uh, Tuesday Commission meeting along with nice. uh, asking the Commission to approve this budget there you go well congratulations uh, to, to everyone and Mike Stark this sends a message to the taxpayers I guess too right that uh, oh, okay. even though they might gripe and be concerned or complain or I don't know any taxpayer in Santa County that complains about anything but um, but but they should feel good knowing that their money is being spent appropriately and and there are people that are overseeing this and checking their numbers and checking how things are accounted for and it's all very a plus Scott you're spot on you know our, our citizens want to know that their dollars are being spent wisely that that we're fiscally sound um, that we're transparent and that and that we're accountable and so and that's what these two awards represent uh, to the citizens and, and that they know that, that the financial matters of San Juan County are being run uh, very well and, and that their dollars are being spent very wisely. And so, um, you know, testament to Jim and his staff uh, and, and all the employees in the county, but, but they really do work their butts off to, to make it all happen. And there's a lot of time and effort that goes into really going above and beyond what's required from the state level. And that's what the GFOA awards represent that, hey, we've got you know, this extra time and effort put into these financial statements, put into our budget presentation um, that provides a lot of great information to our citizens. Um, those documents are available on our website um, going back a number of years, so I encourage, you know, if a citizen wants to learn more about the services we provide, wants to learn more about how their dollars are spent, sjcounty.net, um, finance department documents great place to go and and all that data is available to our citizens we try to be as transparent as possible on how taxpayer dollars are spent very good and lots of cool graphs and charts I'm sure. Oh yeah, on that website. Yeah, so there you go. All right. And Jump. if you need more, contact Jim. I will yeah. really contact Jim. Yeah, he, can, he can get one up going in seconds. That's true. <laughs> Gentlemen, thanks for coming in this morning to talk a little bit about the the financial situation facing the county. I know uh, we're not out of the woods. There's a lot of other important conversations going on, certainly. Um, but it, it behooves, I think, all county taxpayers and residents to pay attention to some of these important conversations that are going on these days today. So thank yeah. you. You bet. Yeah, Thanks thank for having you. us, Scott. We You're appreciate very welcome. it. You bet. Mike Stark and Jim Cox from San Juan County, my guests here on KSJE. Back with more in just a moment, everybody. The time right now is 842.
Did you enjoy that podcast? We hope that you did. And if you did, share it with your friends. And if you really want to keep podcasts like this coming, please support KSJE. You can do it easily online at ksje.com.